Hello everyone and welcome to the very first edition of Kick It to Scoop. Second edition of Kick It to Scoops. Hello everyone and welcome to a very special edition of Kick It to Scoops. I'm your host, Cooper Gretsch. Cooper Gretsch here. Yes. I'm your host, Cooper Gretsch. It's a very motorcycle guy today. Kick game. Not good enough. My team of the week. Tell me a bit about yourself. Just fill me in quickly. Who is the egg now? No worries, thanks for having us, Cooper. Appreciate it. Best time in four goals and over 28 disposals. Hello everyone and welcome to Kick It to Scoops. I'm your host, Cooper Gretsch. The sole admin of AFL information, trade rumours. And results, I've got a very loaded show for you guys today. We've got the world-famous segment, Scoops Goes Bang. I'm going to bang on about the St Kilda Selection Committee slash game plan and St Kilda players checking out and the coaching panel essentially checking out. We've got my super coach talk. Uh, we've got the review and preview of the rounds that's gone and upcoming. My team of the week. And I'm going to kind of go through some predictions for the final two rounds. As well, I might incorporate that in the review or preview section, or I might just separate it at some point during the show. Now, first of all, I want to go through some news of the day. I'm trying to change it up a little bit, the order. So, I just want to go through Patrick Cripps, as of this recording, is looking like he may get a two-week suspension and might be sent to the tribunal, which would then mean it's on Tuesday night. So, we'll wait and see the outcome there. Uh, Josh Kennedy from the Swans may have seen the end of him from the Swans. Just came back from a hamstring injury. Was a sub in the AFL side for a few weeks. Played some VFL games. And unfortunately, in the VFL game against North Melbourne yesterday, he done his hamstring. So hopefully that's not the last we see of JPK from the Swans. Now, keeping the Josh Kennedy flavour going, Josh Kennedy, the uh, the star eagle and former blue, in his final game, kicked eight goals in his last AFL game. J- Josh Kennedy from the Eagles, congratulations, mate, on a great career. He went out on a bang kicking eight. Uh, 293 AFL career games, over 720 AFL goals. You're an absolute superstar of the competition, Jay Kennedy. You will be missed, mate. Congratulations again. And an emotional return for Ben Cunnington after having cancer, recovering from that, having COVID a few weeks a week ago. Uh, this is his first game back in a very long time. So, Cunners, great to see you back, mate. And uh, hopefully he'll be back in the AFL side next week. Or he, I don't think he played the whole game. Um, but he may be in this week, so we'll wait. So they've got two games to go to the Roos, so you'll see Cunners back. If it's not this week coming, it's definitely going to be the week after that. So welcome back, Cunners. So now also, you want me on Cameo, head to cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. I love doing the Cameos. You want me to roast a friend? You want me to tell them they suck at Supercoach, suck at AFL Fantasy, suck at EPL Premier League, anything at all, fantasy that is on that, Anything you want to congratulate someone on a happy birthday, an engagement, a wedding, um, anything at all um, that's respectable, respectful, I will fulfill your request. Um, so you head to cameo.com forward slash Cooper G for that. Also, got my merch. There's plenty of t-shirts on there. The Lift Your Game t-shirts, the Acknowledge Me t-shirts, uh, the Kick It Scoops You Are Blocked t-shirt, the Kick It Scoops original t-shirt. All the t-shirt designs are on the site. There's over six designs to so go and get yours today. And, of course, we've got hats. There's under five remaining. Stickers, under five remaining. Once they go, they're gone. Well, they may come back, but there's no guarantee. Now, this stage, they won't be. Um, so go and get yours today. There's, like, three stickers and three hats left, so go and get yours today. And there's, obviously, stubby holders still on the site as well. So go and get yours today. Any merch... Uh, any merch ideas you got or any type of designs you want, um, send it through to me on Facebook or Instagram, Instagram AFL Info Live. Um, yeah, I greatly appreciate your support if you can um, through that. And if you can't do any of that, that's fine. But please leave a like on this video. I want to aim for at least 20 likes. Subscribe to the channel. Cost you absolutely nothing. Turn on the bell for all notifica- notifications and leave a respectful comment. Uh, now, I want to aim for 20 likes for this video. You want to get the subscriber limit up. You want to see more of my content, guys. See my match day vlogs I did yesterday for the Saints and Geelong game. Well, Saturday night, technically. Um, you want to see all that? Um, go and subscribe to the channel, and you won't miss a thing on the YouTube content. 
So now let's get down to business with that world famous segment. Scoops goes bang. Rats, St Kilda checking out. First quarter against Geelong was average. To the credit for the boys, they came back in the second quarter. Down by 10 at halftime, gave up a late goal again. I was disappointed with that, but anyway. 10 points at halftime, you thought, okay, we're in the contest. Good. Good, we're in the contest. Maybe down by 10, but it was still gettable. And in the third quarter, Geelong, in the fourth quarter, for that matter, but Geelong in the third quarter were too strong and put the game pretty much out of reach. And then that's the problem with St Kilda. They get to a lead or get to in the mark, and then there's a quarter or two where they just fade out completely and check out. Rats, where is your plan B? Bombing the ball and Max King every single week is not doing anything to his comments whatsoever. He got frustrated a bit during the game, and rightfully so. The delivery is shit. The decision making is shit. Your game plan is shit. Now, people say, oh, when you're winning, you don't say nothing. Maybe because they're playing differently or their ball use is better. And people will say, oh, Cooper, it's not his fault the players are kicking shit. No. But the game plan of continuously bombing to Max King four on one is never going to work. How many weeks have I said this? I'm repeating myself every week because they don't change the fucking game plan out. Like, seriously, rats, change the game plan out. Kick it to other people. Give it to... If Max has got four on one... Where's the three loose plays? Oh, that's right. They're trolling along in the midfield or in the back half looking for their cheap touches. Brad Hill. I've been a big and strong advocate for Brad Hill and defender of Brad Hill when he came to the Saints on the big money, and he probably deserved the contract at the time. But I tell you right now, if he wasn't on that contract, he'd be playing VFL at the moment. Yeah, great. He's getting the ball. But he's doing nothing with it. And for his biggest asset is meant to be his ball use. It is crucially stuffing him up. The side Wang and Emilio hasn't played for a few weeks. He was touted as one of the best kicks in his draft. He's finally been dropped. That ball used to spend to be his biggest asset. And he butchered it and made up crucial mistakes. And finally he was dropped. So Brad Hill, you should be dropped as well. Ratton never makes selection statements. He drops the same, same players. It's Leanit. It's Burns. It's Owens. It's Winhager. Well, not so much lately, but it normally is those type of names. Or it's Ben Patton. Or players like Billings when he wasn't injured, who may be back this week, hopefully. You know, it's just the merry-go-round. It's the same guys that get dropped week in and week out. Make a statement, Rats. We need to win the last two games and hope that either Carlton lose both, which they could, but we need to win both regardless. And then if that doesn't happen for Carlton, if they win one of their next two, we need Richmond to win no more than one, and we need to win both. So... Is it the right time to make a statement? I don't know. But show some balls, some toughness on you. Mark McVay, when he said the Giants checked out, look at the response he got. He dropped three players, and he got a, got a statement. Essendon were in some solid form. GWS went out and smashed them, and Essendon were not close at all. See what happened to the Giants. They got nothing to play for. So that, that, that effort and, you know, comeback for them from the previous week, they if it didn't happen, it didn't happen. But the security, the season's on the line still. Freaking lift. Change something, rats. For God's sake. Because oh, I can't even some slack. We made finals in 2020. Great. 2021, no, we didn't. Why they rushed for that two-year contract, I'll still never believe. People at the higher-ups that gave him that contract needed to question their own job. Why did they have to rush? Clyco is still there and could have been in the mix had they waited. Obviously, North Melbourne and GWS are the contenders for him. But seriously, rats. Change something up. Play Jared Lena, who actually played well while he was in, and keep him in. He's a key defender, but he's got the versatility and speed to play as a winger, which you've played him as. Play him through the middle. He's got the height. He can move. He can kick. He can kick long too, and he's an accurate kick. And he's a solid decision maker, is like Jared Lena. Tom Campbell. What do you got against Tom Campbell, rats? Dominating the FIFA week in and week out. Now, this may have been the VFL, but he destroyed Johnny Seglin and young Geelong Ruckman, Toby Conway, yesterday. He had 20 possessions and two goals in the first half. And finished the game on 28 disposals and 40 hitouts. That first half, in particular, was the best 
game I've ever seen a Ruckman play. That's how dominant Tom Campbell was. He was winning his tap outs. He was bringing plays into the game. Ryan Burns and players like that were playing in the VFL. Jack Bartel as well. He was in great form. His ruck work, ruck work, tap work was awesome. His follow-up was awesome. He was running in the middle of the ground and on the wings multiple times in the game on his own, running and delivering goals, setting up goals, and kicked two of his own. That was one of the most solid games he's played. Now, St. Kilda have always said they want to play two rucks, Ryder and Marshall. Well, Ryder's out for the rest of the home and away season. So why isn't Tom Campbell playing? There's been games this year where Ryder and Marshall have missed. He gave the excuse last week that he was never going to play Tom Campbell despite naming it and saying, oh, we didn't know Ned Reeves was going to pull out on Thursday night. Bullshit, you didn't. Bullshit, you didn't. You know, and you made the excuse that you were playing tactics with Hawthorne. And uh, no matter who you are, Geelong do it, Chris Scott, Black, Blake Stiles and that were managed. They were never playing. So people say, oh, they were laid out and you still lost. Oh, Gresham was out. Billings was out. McKenzie was out. Ryder was out. Jack Hayes was out. Dominic continue. Like, seriously, rats, lift your game. The selection is a joke. Change the game plan up. Go through the freaking middle. Why do you persist to keep going through the boundary, the boundary line, the wings? There is a middle, you know. There is no danger zone in the middle. You can go through the middle. It's funnily enough, when the game's dead, you start to go in the middle through the last couple of minutes of the Geelong game, last five minutes, max. And we kick two goals from it. Oh, surprise, surprise, rats. Change it up. Be bold. Stop being conservative. Do something different, because Max King, his goal kicking isn't great either, but the delivery to him is pathetic. The forward line should consist of Membry, King, and the second ruck, Marshall slash Ryder. Now, this case could be Campbell or Marshall. Just play Marshall as the forward. Just play him as the forward and Campbell as the ruck while Ryder's injured. Plain and simple, just do that. The back line, they need to recruit a key defender. There's a name right now, I know he's not going to leave, but Tom Barras. Throw out the checkbook at him. Five years, six years at him. Dougal Howard needs support. Cal Wilkie and co. Are fine battle. A fine, but they're not tall enough to play as key position defenders. I knew going into the Geelong game, the Hawkins and Cameron were going to be the issue, and I said in my vlog, they were the two to stop. Hawkins was dominant in the first half. And Cameron was solid throughout the game, so there needs to be a plan B. There needs to be a plan B, and it needs to be an efficient plan, because when plan A doesn't work, they cash out. They checked out. Sorry to cash out. They checked out. Um, so fix it. I'm with your game, rats. I don't, you don't deserve the two-year contract extension at the moment. You're pretty content that you got the two years and you've given up yourself. You checked out it a long time ago since you got the two-year extension or once you known you were getting it. Pathetic. Lift your game. If you think of this hurting your feelings, um, bad luck. Do something about it and fix the game. Like, cause we're, I had enough of this bullshit mediocrity mediocrity that you've delivered throughout this second half of 2022. We deserve to be playing finals. Um, and team selection is poor. Game plan is poor. There's no plan B. Drop Brad Hill. Make a bloody statement. Stop picking your favourites, him, Ben Long, all them type of names. Drop them. And make them earn their spot back and lift your game. Have you guys enjoyed that edition of the world famous segment Scoops? Goes Bang! Right. We're going to go review round 21. Please leave a like in this video, guys, if you haven't already. It was all the way back on Friday night that it was a victory to the Pies. 11 wins in a row for the Pies, guys. Um, nine of those 11 wins are under 11, 11 points or less. There's a few, two, two margins over 11. But the Pies, to their credit, they're doing very, very well. Craig McRae's doing an awesome job. Um, Seven-point victory over the Demons, 96-89. Dick Dacos is great. Geordie DeGoey was great. How would you feel? Kano, Volcano. It's a bit quiet on Geordie this week, aren't you, mate? Mm -hmm. He had a great game again. Nick Dacos was pretty good. Um, their mids, Jack Crisp had a better game. He's been quiet the last month. It's an all-around great performance on the Pies. Ash Johnson kicking four. Jamie Elliott kicking four. Two of their best players also. So it was great to see for the Pies. Uh, to win seven in a row. Oliver was great, and as was Petrarca um, and Gorn. But a yeah, close win for the Pies. They came back in the second half. I just knew they were coming back because that's the way their last 11 matches have been if they were behind. So great win for the Pies. They're second on the ladder. Um, they are the threat for the comp this year. I know people say, yep, yeah, 
recruit, but if they didn't win some of those games, um, could have been a whole different story on the ladder. Yes, but the way they're playing, the way they're finding back when behind is very, very adamant that they're in the contest. No matter how far behind they are behind in parts of the game, whether it's in the second quarter or the start of the game, they fight back. And see, that's the difference that Kilda need. Fight back, not give up. But yeah, great game. Great win for the Pies over Melbourne. On Saturday, the Hawks and the Suns, Hawthorne 70, Gold Coast 63, Hawthorne by seven points. Two games in a row for the round, seven points. Interesting. Uh, the Hawks play that ground well. Gold Coast haven't played the too often. Um, and that probably was a deciding factor in the end. Gold Coast did a lot of, lot of behinds in the last quarter, so they had their opportunities. Uh, for the Hawks, though, 70 to 63. Great all round performance for them. For the Suns, David Swallow was there probably their best player with Jared Witts. It was pretty solid. Bad boy, big boy, McAvoy, game 250, former Saint. Um, big boy, it was a great player for the Saints. Should never have been traded out. Another terrible trade move we've done. Um, well, actually, sorry, the trade moves have been pretty solid lately, but that one was ridiculous. Um, but he played well in his 250, so did Witsy. Um, so they were even bad all in the ruck. Um, Sicily was solid as well. Um, as I said, all round great performance for the Hawks. Uh, the Suns, their mathematical finals chances is completely gone. GWS 96 defeated the Bombers 69. GWS with 27 points. Yep, Hogan was great. Whitfield was good. Uh, Tarana was laid out all, during the week, uh, with concussion. They missed him to lay concussion, they're saying. Um, all around great performance for them, though. Very dominant. Canelia was pretty solid as well. Um, I could list a lot of the plays with the Giants were pretty, pretty good. Uh, Essendon, not much to say. They're disappointing after the form they've had. They, they play like that. Ben Martin will be furious. Bulldogs and Freo, 17 point victory to the Dockers. Sorry, I'm about to uh, mispronounce that. 17 point victory, as I said. 78 to the Bulldogs, 95 to the Dockers. Lobb was great before. Andy Brayshaw was pretty good. Um, how great were Rory Lobb's goals on the boundary line? Absolutely awesome against his potential new side. So, uh, interesting. 17 point victory was an important win. The Dockers they needed to get. Sarong was pretty good. Um, yeah, it was a all around great performance for the Dockers. The Bulldogs, um, they're, they're in trouble. Their season may be gone. Absolutely gone. Uh, Geelong, St Kilda. Uh, yeah. Geelong, 110 to feed the Saints, 65, 45 point victory to Geelong, as I said earlier. Second half was the reason why we lost. 10 points trailing by 10 at half time was okay. Crouch, Mason Wood was probably St Kilda's best play with Crouchy. Um, yeah. Wasn't the best all around performance. Um, yeah, it's disappointing. Um, Tom Stewart was well held by Machito Owens. Good on you, Mitch. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say. Geelong were too good in the second half. Um, yeah, check out my match day vlog for my thoughts on that. It was disappointing in the end. Um, yeah, there was no real standout place for either plays for either side of the plays in this game. It was really. If so, the votes, which you'll see after the Scripps medal later in the year, between the round 23 and the week one of the finals, it's going to be very hard to pick the votes for this game. Well, I already have picked them, but it was very hard, and there was no real sound for either team, so it was very hard to pick. Uh, next game to go through on the other night game was the Power on the Do Tigers. Richmond are now in the eight. Yes, they're in the eight for now. Hopefully, for now. 109 to... Quite late 71, Richmond by 38. Disappointed for the power. We needed them to win. St Kilda, that is. And, uh, yeah, not good enough on the power. Pretty disappointed. Toby Nankaris is clearly best on ground. Uh, Cotchen done okay. Shy Bolton did pretty well as well. Well, Brian Tickle, Young Ruck, did okay individually. But Toby Nankaris had a big game. Uh, Travis Boak, Ollie Wines, um, Jack Butters, some of the best players for the power. The flitch has been... The switch has been flicked off. The power of the season. Mathematical chance is over. Um, so that's down to nine. I'll get to that. I think the Bulldogs are done as well. Mathematically, they're not, but I don't think they'll make it. We'll get to that in a sec. Sunday games, North Melbourne and the Swans. North Melbourne, 88, defeated by the Swans. 
126. Sydney by 38. If they had kicked straight at the Swans, this could have been a lot worse. But to North Melbourne's credit, they fought through. They stayed in the contest. They did very well. Nick Larky kicked seven. Great to see for Nick. He's having a good year, especially in patches. Uh, the Swans. Their buddy talk doesn't go away with Brisbane now being linked to him. I wouldn't rule that out. They say Both clubs are saying it's news to them. But they're not saying, no, that won't happen, nothing like that. But his manager during the week on Saturday said that holding all discussion talks at the end of the season. So, so watch this space on Buddy. Watch this space with Brisbane. And wouldn't rule out, dare I say it, GWS. No intel on that. I'm just, just got this feeling. If he wants to stay in Sydney, GWS need a key forward. They could offer the money. Especially if they lose. Because of their salary cap stuff. If they're going to be losing these places linked to Hope, uh, Hopper and Taranto, Tanner Bruin, and there's a fourth guy. I just forgot the top of my head. Oh, Bobby Hill. Um, they could free up some room. If Grundy doesn't happen, which I don't think it will, um, that money could then be spent on Buddy because that's a key for they need it. But although it'd only be for two years max, so it's an interesting one. The Swans got the job done. Chad Warner was pretty good King three. Well done, Chad. Um, yeah, Luke Parker was pretty good. Cal Mills did okay. Row bottom. So, um, yeah, it was an easy win for the Swans in the end. Easy victory, victory for the Brisbane Lions. Smashed the Blues, 33 points, 114 to 81. Carlton, to their credit, they were down and out in the last quarter. They tried to make some effort. At least they didn't check out. Um, that was a terrible performance for Carlton. They're, they're shaky for the eight spot in the eights. They're really shaky. They're really, really shaky in missing the eight. They probably will lose the next two games against Collingwood. And who the hell's the other game they got? Um, they could lose that, so I think it's Melbourne. Yes, it is Melbourne. So, um, yeah, they're in trouble. They're in real trouble. Brisbane Lions, Lockie Neal was their best, along with um, Hugh McCluggage. Cripps was okay. Probably get two weeks, as I said earlier. They're, when this is recording's on, while I'm recording this, the outcome for Paddy Cripps doesn't come here, but it will by the time the show airs. Typical. Uh, West Coast, in Jay Kennedy's last game, Josh Kennedy, he eight in his farewell game. Great under JK. As I said earlier in the show, uh, great career. 293 games. Over 720 goals. One on JK. Rory Laird in game 200 was best on ground. Alongside Josh Kennedy, funnily enough, in their milestone games. Uh, or farewell game and milestone game for Rory Laird. Game 200. Rory kicked 236. Was awesome. Uh, Texas quarter game for him. Darcy Fogarty. Fogarty was great. Um, the Eagles. Tim Kelly did okay. Uh, but it was JK show and the Laird show and the Fogarty show um, in WA. It was the Crows by 16 points, 86 to 102. Um, it, dead rubber in a way, but the Eagles put the effort in. They were in the game the whole way through. They fought back. Uh, the Crows came back as well. So a pretty solid game for two sides that aren't making finals. Pretty solid. Now, we're going to go through my AFL team of the week. Now, apologies if I keep moving out of camera shot. Do apologize for that. Um, I'm reading my notes off my phone, so it's covering my camera, so I can't see it at times. Just taking it off to see where I was positioned, so I apologize if I go out of shot. Or you see half a face. But if you're on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, that does not matter at all. Now, my AFL team of the week. Here we go. <clears throat> My round 21 AFL team of the week. Back pockets, Nick Dacos and Jordan Dawson. Full back, Harris Andrews. Half back line, Luke Ryan and Angus Brayshaw. Center half back, James Sicily. Wingers, Josh Dunkley and Chad Warner. Centerman, Lockie Neal. Half forward line, Jack Gunston and Zach Bailey. Oh, hang on. Oh, absolutely. Oh. Now, oh, hello. Hang on a minute. Oh, I've made a boo-boo. Um, technically, I can edit this out. Um, when I post you the screenshot of my final team, I've, uh, oh, I've made a boo-boo. I've named 23 plays on this list. Um, oh, boy. Um, gee, I'm on the spot here. I'm going to have to make a decision while I'm recording. I've, uh, Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> I've named four plays on this line. Look, on the half four line, Including center forward, Nick Larky will be in, Jack Gunston will be in, and uh, oh, shite. Uh, we'll go Zach Bailey. No, 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 we'll go Shy Bolton. So, Zach Bailey will have to go to the B 
bench, I think, and I might just bump a player off the bench. I'm um, gonna have to gee. Um oh boy. Oh boy. Where are we? Pockets. Jamie Elliott. Ah. Ah, oh, scoops. <laughs> oh, I've just read the line. No. I've named Zach Bailey twice. <laughs> That's what I did. I apologize for confusing everyone. Anyone confused myself, so it's okay. If you're confused, it's okay. I've confused myself. So I'll repeat. Half forward line. Jack Gunston center, and Shai Bolton. Center half forward. Nick Larky. Pockets. Zach Bailey and Jamie Elliott. Full forward from the Eagles. Josh Kennedy. Ruckman. Toby Nankobas. Rovers. Clayton Oliver and Rory Laird. Interchange. Rory Lobb. Max Gorn. Jesse Hogan and Ollie Wines. Emergencies. Ash Johnson. Ash Johnson. Darcy Fogarty. Jai Simkin. Luke Parker and Christian Petrarca. Now, leave your thoughts down below. My round 21 AFL Team of the Week reasons. Um, no St. Kilda plays this week. People are going to say, oh, ho, ho, ho. how could you not? Well, I didn't because I didn't think anyone deserved it. If you heard my game review earlier, there was no clear standouts for both sides. And, yeah, pretty plain and simple. The only one that would have come in in some consideration was Brad Crouch. And uh, the midfielders I had were better than Crouchy this week. Crouch still had a good game. Um... Yeah, so let's have a look. Harris Andrews, there wasn't many key st standout key defenders. People are going to say Sam DeConing, but the delivery to King wasn't great, so that's part of the reason why I didn't put DeConing in. So Harris Andrews did a good job on the Carlton key forwards. So Harris Andrews was there. Dacos and Dawson playing more back half this week. Luke Ryan was also the best flanker for the round. Angus Brayshaw was up there, even though he played a bit of mid. Played half back as well. Um, Cicely, Cicely was good, again, as he always is. Dunkley was the Bulldogs' best player. Lockie Neal was best on ground. Chad Warner, 3 and 20 on the wing was important. Got a lot of clearances too. Gunson kicked 5. Larky kicked 7. Bolton kicked... Oh, I can't remember the time he had, but I think he kicked... He kicked back poorly, again, accurate-wise. It was 3-5, was it? Something like that, and a lot of possessions. Jamie Elliott had kicked 4. Zach Bailey kicked 4 in about 19 touches. Josh Kenny kicked 8 in his farewell game on JK. Toby Nankervis was the best runner. Had almost 30 possessions, about 33 hitouts. Clayton Oliver had 42. Laird had 2 and 36 or 2 and 38. Lobb kicked four and four great goals. Max Gorn was the next best ruck and it was hard to ignore. Jesse Hogan kicked four and had 17. Only once at 32 in the mid and a lot of clearances. So, as Johnson, I thought of kicked four important goals. Um, never many possessions, but that's the only reason he stayed out for essentially for Hogan. Fogarty, I could have put him in and I probably should have. It was important in the game. So a lot of many couldn't put so many key to forwards or medium size. We got Gunston, Larky, Kennedy, and Hogan, and Lobb. So I can't really put them all in. Simpkin was pretty solid in the mid. Rue's best player. Petrarca, his efficiency wasn't great, which kept him out. And Parker was pretty much the exact same reason for the other mids that were in ahead of them. Um, Leave your thoughts down below of my round 21 AFL team of the week and what changes you would make. And why? Now, let's go through the next thing on the agenda. And that is Supercoach Talk. I scored 2,390. I think that was top 24% for the round. So it was a high scoring round for a lot of people. My overall ranking is still the top 13%. My average is over 2,200. So, gee, a lot of good people. If I've got an average of over 2,200 and I'm only top 13%. Um, hmm, interesting. Um, so yeah, my team, I've got no trades left as though, if you didn't know already. So it'll be the team going in with this. Jack Sinclair, Luke Ryan, Jack, from the back line, from the back line, Jack Sinclair, Luke Ryan, who's the last in I did for George Hewitt, James Sicily, Hayden Young, Jaden Short, Jack Crisp, Bench, Burgoyne, Jace Burgoyne, and Sam Skinner. Midfielders, captain will be again, Rory Laird, Toik Miller, Clayton Oliver, Lockie Neal, who will be vice, that play Friday night. Other mids, Cal Mills. Callum Mills, Andy Brayshaw, Jack McRae, Ben Keyes, Bench, Mitch Owens, Cooper Hamilton, James Cheetahs, um, Rucks, Todd Goldstein and Riley O'Brien, Bench, Brian Teekle, Forwards, Steve Cornelio, Isaac Heaney, Tim English, Aiden, Aiden Trelaw, Adam Trelaw, Will Brody and Pat Lipinski, Bench, Ned Long and Jai Cully. Um, when he, uh, it's two weeks ago in Supercoach. If you're in the top rankings and, and you want some advice... We were around, won the round five super coach. I think it was 2,557 I scored that round. I know my stuff. Um, there's a lot of plays. Uh, 
not in the form. Todd Goldstein, had he been the pure ruck, he's an obvious pick, but then the breaker brought him in, they decided to mix it up, him and Callum Common. James after Cherry was injured, which is the only reason why I brought Goldie in, was Cherry was out there, now they're finally going to give him the full ruck, and now he keeps chopping and changing, there's Lady Adams with Coleman Jones. Rollo O'Brien, a bit inconsistent. James Short. Ben, Key, ben Key's playing a new role, so I would have dumped him if I could. James Short, very mediocre for months, but I can't, I've had a chance I couldn't take him out. Hayden Young, um, was doing very well before trading him in. Done, had some good games, but had some average games as well. Um, Luke Ryan, again, he, he was like that, but this is the first week I brought him in. Scored 146. Jack Sinclair, most consistent defender with Sicily all year. Um, it's a few holes, but no trades left. And uh, when I've had injuries and suspensions throughout the team, uh, I haven't been really been able to trade anybody out. So please leave your thoughts down below. And what changes you want for your team, please send me a message, Instagram, AFL Info Live, or at Facebook, AFL Information, Trade Rumors and Results. There is only one page, mine, 43,000 plus followers on Facebook and Instagram, AFL Info Live, the only Instagram page I have. Now, let's go preview round 22. Two rounds to go. Um, I'm going to give my tips and then I'm going to say about the eight. I'm going to start all the way on Friday night. It's the Saints in a do or die clash with the Lions. 750 Marvel Stadium Friday night. Saints v Lions. I'm obviously tipping the Saints, but the Lions had a great game on the, against Carlton on the weekend. Brisbane are known to fade out a little bit, um, which I did against Richmond. And it looked like that stages they could have done this to Carlton, which they didn't. They came back this time. So the Saints will want to try and take advantage of that if that does happen. Uh, Jack Billing should be back in. Uh, Tom Campbell should be in. Jared Leanett should be in. The experiment of Sharman up as a backman does not work. Playing forward, I don't play him at all. Ben Long, you know what I think. He shouldn't be in the side at all. I don't care how tough you can be. You might as well bring in Dean Kent. Then you're going to bring players that are tough. Their skills aren't up to it. At all. Um, make a statement, Russ, but you won't. Bring Tommy Highmore in. You won't. Do something. I'm just tipping them because I want them to win. Then they can win because it's that Marvel. Um, but the Lions will be a tough ass to handle. Saturday. This is another clash that's important for the eight. I don't think they'll make it, but technically they can still make it. The Bulldogs hosting the Giants and Marvel. 145 on Saturday. I think the Bulldogs will win. 210 at the Adelaide Oval. Victorian 210 Adelaide, uh, 210 Victorian time at the Adelaide Oval. It's the Crows and the Roos and going the Crows. 435 Suns v Geelong at Metricon. I'm going to tip Geelong, but I wouldn't write off the Suns. 725 Saturday night. This is important for the eight as well. Melbourne v Carlton. 725 Vic time MCG I'm going for Melbourne. Carlton and then will be again shaky for the eight. On the other Saturday night game, an interesting game. The, the Derby in Perth. Dockers, Eagles, 7.40 Vic time you know, at Optus Stadium. Free our home game and going to the Dockers to give them the old heave-ho, like they gave the Bulldogs. On Sunday, it's an important game for the eight. The most important game of the round in terms of the, the eighth spot, whether it will be locked up or not. Sunday, 110 MCG, Richmond v. Hawthorne. I'm tipping Richmond, but come on, Hawks, Sam Mitchell, do something. Do something. You beat the Suns, who are in the eight mix. You ended their season. This won't end Richmond's season, but what's the right word I could use? Stop their momentum and put a halt to their guarantee of making the eight. Please, Sammy, do something. Big boy, destroyed Nank, Nank in the ruck. John Newcomb, run into Koch and then Co. Bolton. Do something on about Bolton. Tag him. Do something, Sammy. Get Finn McGuinness on him. Do something. Will Day, do something if he plays forward. Do something, Mitch. We know you got a lot of tricks up your sleeve. You've done it to the Suns. Now do it to the Richmond. But I think Richmond will win. Not that I want them to win, though, for our singular sake. Swans, Pies. This is going to be a great clash in general. The SCG, Sunday, 3.20. SCG, 3.20 Vic time. Swans, Pies. I'm going for the Pies and close one there. Final game of the round to go through is Essendon and Poilet. Dead rubber. 4.40 Marvel Stadium. Vic time. Essen and Port. I'm going to tip the power. Disappointing for Essen against GWS. I'm going to the power. They're also, though, disappointing. Now, guys, my final thoughts are simply this. You want me on Cameo, head to cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. Merch. Any 
T-shirts you want. It's all on the sites. Hats and stickers still remain. Not many, though. Under five. Um, cameo. Cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. I mean, a roast a friend. Wish someone happy birthday. Anything at all. Please send it through to Cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. I love doing the cameos and I love to roast some friends of yours or congratulate your friends, family, or whoever on something. Supercoach draft. Anything at all. Send it through. And I uh, appreciate you all. Now, the... Um, your support, to the people that do support me through everything, your support does not go unnoticed. So I greatly appreciate the loyal people that watch the podcast every week, um, that are positive. It doesn't mean you have to always agree with what I say with my football opinions, but never to get any per- to not get personal or to get offensive. So I appreciate to the loyal people of this podcast that watch my podcast and Facebook page, Instagram page, support the merch, any cam- cameo, anything at all. So appreciate to the loyal people. Until next week, everyone. Have a great one. The most important thing of all to remember is go to the Saints and, of course, acknowledge me, the one. Come on, Saints. Win or the season is over. Come on, Saints.